Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Iceco JP40 portable fridge. We're going to find out whether it's really worth paying a few hundred dollars more for a fridge like this or for some of the cheaper Chinese models out there. And we'll spend some time figuring out how much you can fit inside these things. So have you ever spent any time on Amazon looking for a portable fridge freezer? Well, you might have been overwhelmed by all the options. So originally there were just the Dometics and the ARBs of the world and they all started at about $1,000 and were quite expensive, but you really got what you paid for there. In the last five years, Amazon has been flooded by a whole new generation of fridge freezers from Chinese manufacturers that range about three to $400. Alpacool is one of the big ones out there and so the same size you can get for 300 bucks. I also found a lot of references to Iceco and theirs were consistently more money, but always had really good reviews. And so I started digging into it and trying to figure out why are their fridges more money? And I think the short answer is the compressor. So the compressor is the thing that actually cools down your food. And if you look at what Dometic or Engel or ARB uses, they all use this C-Cop or Danfoss style compressor that is much larger, it's higher quality, and in, in the case of Iceco, they will warranty this for five full years. And a warranty is great and all, but does that translate into better performance? Well, I was watching this Revere Overland video recently, and he compared an Iceco fridge, in fact, the same one I have, to one of these off-brand Chinese ones, and he shockingly found that he got double the runtime, so it's twice as efficient. And in a camping situation, power really matters. So with that in mind, I reached out to Iceco and asked for a reunit because I really wanted to see how efficient this really was. And Iceco was kind enough to send me a review unit of the JP40, which is the perfect size for my upcoming minivan car camper build. So look for a video on that soon. Now, overall, this is a really nice looking fridge. This reminds me of a better version of the older Dometic CFX series fridges. On the sides, there are these really burly handles that have aluminum and really strong springs on them. And it makes it very easy to pick up this unit. And speaking of picking it up, it's only 34 pounds, which is actually very, very lightweight compared to my Dometic fridge that I have. I would say overall fit and finish is really good. I mean, it uses pretty typical plastics, but it does seem like it is well insulated. There's some really nice gaskets on it and the top has a really nice textured appearance. So it feels really rugged. This feels like something you could sit on in your van and not really worry about it. The controls on it are very, very simple. There's just a power button and there is this gear icon and the gear icon essentially switches between max and eco modes so very simple there i would recommend leaving it on eco it will save quite a bit of power and i'll get into that a little bit later in the video and show you just how much power you can save the plus and minus buttons allow you to adjust the set temperature for the unit you can set it all the way up at 54 degrees which i'm not sure why you would do that all the way down to negative eight so good range there you can use it as a fridge or a freezer but it is single zone. And overall, I really like the display. It's easy to read in bright light and the buttons are satisfyingly clicky enough. I don't really feel like you're going to accidentally click a button. And speaking of a clicky, there's this really satisfying latch on this thing. It's at the end. And so keep in mind that you do need some height when you open this thing up, but it's very easy and satisfying just to grab it and open it in one fluid motion. And unlike my Dometic that uses a really heavy duty metal hinge, this uses a much simpler setup that's I think plastic on plastic, but it does seem relatively strong. There's a little bit of wiggle in it, but nothing to worry about. There is a built-in plastic cable to keep the lid from opening too far. And this is what it looks like inside. On the left-hand side is the crisper area and the right hand side is the main fridge area and yes the light really is truly blue it's not a blue tinted white it's just blue 
It's a really strange design decision. It's one of the only nitpicks I have with this unit. And on the top of the lid, there is a handy wiring diagram, some specifications, and a quick guide for temperatures to keep your food at for maximum safety. And speaking of safety, one thing I really like about the Iceco fridges is they have this ETL badge on it, which is the same as being UL listed, which means electrically this is going to be a lot safer. And that's something that a lot of Chinese products are missing and they could become a safety hazard. Closest to the hinge is a crisper area, which is good for things that don't need to be quite as cold as the main compartment. I'll get into the measurements in that in a moment. And the main compartment has a shiny plastic white floor and textured metal sides. It all seems to be really tidy, but there is no drain, so keep that in mind. Iceco includes this pretty standard uh, basket, and the basket has a optional divider that allows you to section it off into a 50-50 kind of layout. I tend to leave the basket in there just so I can grab everything out and maybe it helps with airflow and I tend to omit the middle section. I don't really find that ever makes the organization any better. One of the things I'm always worried about when looking for a fridge is, is it going to fit things like milk? And I can tell you that this will easily handle standard milk, whether it's half gallon or gallon. And most importantly, it will fit a bottle of wine, even one that has the cork sticking out a little bit. Looking around the business end of this, where the compressor lives, there is all of the inputs, outputs, and fuses at the bottom. And on either side is where the fans go to blow across the compressor and keep things cool. And it's super important to keep these unobstructed in your vehicle. If you do, you will probably kill this unit. I can tell you that I killed my Alpacool the same way. So let's take a look at the input side of things here. In the middle, there is an automotive fuse, and there's actually another fuse on the AC side of things. And on the right-hand side, this high, medium, low switch controls the low voltage cutoff to make sure your battery doesn't die. In the box, Iceco provides a standard AC plug. Seems pretty heavy duty. And it seems like it stays in really well when you plug it in. I haven't had trouble with it falling out at all. And they also give you a really nice DC power plug. It seems pretty heavy duty. And I've heard lots of nightmares about these connectors falling out. Uh, I feel like this one grips really, really well. And I've had zero complaints about it. Nice job, Isco. They also throw in a really nice 12 volt extension cable. If for some reason your fridge is too far away from the 12 volt socket in your car. They include a quick start guide, as well as a pretty good manual that shows you all the things you need to know about operating this fridge. And it's worth noting that you do need to put the handles on so they have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that when you first get the fridge. But uh, yeah, I would say in the realm of instruction manuals that you get from random Chinese products from Amazon, this one's pretty good. The other really nice thing that they include in the box is an insulated cover. And if you've ever looked at fridges on Amazon, you know that these covers don't come cheap. So if you look at some of these examples here, I would say this has a value between $60 to $80. So you should really factor that in because most fridges don't come with covers and Iceco includes it in all of these JP line fridges. Getting the cover on is a little bit of a wrangle. You definitely have to pull really tightly and get it fitted around all of the things. Uh, I would say the handles are a little tricky. You got to really get them around there and you have to unvelcro it so that you can get it underneath the handles. But you know, the zippers seem like pretty good quality. There is dual zippers so they can meet at the back. And overall, I'm pretty happy with it. You can see here one weird thing. Maybe I put it on wrong, but I can't quite see the controls through that window. So I think it's probably my fault, to be honest. And I'm sure you're going to let me know in the comments. I tried my best. On the side, there's a pair of little pockets, which are helpful for maybe putting your cables into. And you can see there's cutouts for the vents. 
and the handles are fully operational as well as the control panel so I would say it's a pretty nice bag. Now I really don't know how well this actually insulates but it will keep it protected. And I've never used one of these insulated covers on a fridge before so I don't know if this is typical or not but I was finding that the lid was always getting caught on the edge of the bag. And so that required a whole lot of fiddling, which is one of the reasons why, even though I think this is probably something I should use, I don't think I'm going to use it every day in my camper van because it just seems kind of fiddly. Let's take a quick look at dimensions. This thing is 23 inches deep or long. 13.8 uh, inches wide and 17.5 inches tall. It's actually really quite compact. and 14 and a half inches deep. So that's a bunch of boring measurements that you can get online. What I wanted to do is let you see how this looks compared to my Dometic CFX375 dual zone. And it's a huge difference. So this is 40 and the Dometic is 75. And hopefully that helps you visualize it. So whenever I'm looking at specs, I'm trying to imagine what kind of food can I fit into this thing when I'm doing a trip? And I can never find that information online. They all measure everything in beer cans. I don't know about you, but I like eating food too. So what I thought I would do is get some realistic food that I want to bring on my road trip this summer and show you what would fit in there. So this is typical things that we would probably bring. So we've got sandwich meats, we've got milk, we've got condiments and eggs, yogurt, and I just wanted to give you a sense of all the different ways that you could pack this with typical things. You know, will it fit a wine bottle? Will it fit whipped cream? And I think it's pretty impressive, actually. My wife and I were very blown away by just how much food we were able to fit into this really small fridge. Now, mind you, we've been used to the Dometic 75 dual zone, and we could still pack a ton of food in here. So. I would say, you know, be careful about how you pack it, put the colder items to the bottom, but you know, you can definitely get food for a family. You might need to go shopping every couple days, but this thing will treat you right on the road. And just for comparison, I also thought I'd do one of these with the divider in. I don't know. Do you think this makes it better or worse? Let me know in the comments if you use the divider and how you use it. It does seem like I fit a little more in there, but I didn't like it. Lastly, I wanted to do a bunch of testing around energy consumption for the Iceco fridge. For this, I'm using my EcoFlow River Pro because, hey, why not? And for the first test, I wanted to find out how long it would take to go from ambient temperature, which is in the 50s, down to zero degrees on max. So when running the test, it was using about 50 to 55 watts on the screen. And you can see the time lapse going down here. It did cool down fairly quickly. We're talking about over 50 degrees of temperature change here. And in the end, it took exactly one hour to go from 54 to zero degrees Fahrenheit on max. Not too bad. And I let this keep running at zero degrees on max to see how much power it actually would use and in the end it was 488 watt hours over 16 hours so that factors out to about 30 watts per hour which means you could run this very easily for 24 hours at this point the ecoflow was at 31 percent and i figured now would be a good time to switch from max to eco mode to see if i could squeeze a little more life out of this battery and surprisingly, this thing ran for another 10 hours. So that works out to about 24 watts an hour. And if the battery had been fully charged, I would have gotten about 30 hours of battery life from it. Very impressive. And just as another data point, my Dometic 75 
uses about 50 watts an hour on eco mode. So it uses twice the power that this ISCO does. So how much power does it use as a refrigerator? Well, to test that, I fully charged the battery and I set this at 39 degrees in eco mode and just let it run. Now I'll tell you, this test took a very long time because this thing's a champ. It ran for 54 hours, which runs about 13.7 watts per hour. So this thing sips those electrons. So what are my final thoughts on the ISCO JP40? Well, overall I came away really impressed. I would say that it's really worth the premium. The amount of accessories that they give you, including all the extra cables and the cover and the five-year warranty on the Danfoss CCOP compressor and the added energy efficiency all add up to a really attractive package. So for me, this was the perfect fridge and it's going to be going in my forthcoming minivan build. So if you're interested in finding out about that, please subscribe to the channel. That video will be coming out pretty soon and I'm very excited about it. Thanks for watching.